Hi, Kinesiology students, Coach Harvey here. Today, we're going to continue looking at how to analyze nutrition labels. So let's do a quick review. Uh, here we have a nutrition label for a kiwi fruit. And if you remember the last lesson, we learned how to both calculate the calories from a food and also the calorie ratio. So I'm gonna give you a minute to uh, do that here. Calculate the total calories from this food and then also the percentage of calories that come from carbohydrates. Pause the video and then resume when you're ready. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do that. Uh, let's go through how to do that again. To get the calories from fat, we're gonna take the grams of fat and multiply by nine calories per gram. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the carbs, multiplying them by four, and also the proteins by four. And if we do that, we should end up with 121 calories. And then we wanna take the 104 calories that we got from carbs and divide them by that total to get the percentage. And that should come out to about 86% with some rounding. Now, if we look at the actual label, uh, this kiwi fruit uh, per cup has 108 calories. And you'll notice that that's different than the 121 that we calculated here, or what we might also call potential calories. What I'd like you to do is, again, pause the video and answer this question. Uh, and that is, why do the calories on the label differ from the potential calories that we calculate. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to think about that. So let's look at uh, the answer. So the reason that the label calories differ from the potential calories is that the label calories is based on lab tests. You may recall that when they uh, test these foods, they use what's called a bomb calorimeter and they literally burn the food and the heat that comes out of burning that uh, gives researchers an idea of how much energy is in that food. Um, the, when we calculate the calories using the 944 ratios, there's also a few things those don't take into account, like some fats might have higher than nine calories per gram, giving your, uh, making your calorie total higher. And also remember that there are some uh, calories that we will not actually absorb or, or uh, obtain from food. Fiber, for example, gives us zero calories. And when we calculate uh, four calories per gram for uh, carbohydrates, we might be including uh, some fiber in there that's not actually going to be digested. Uh, if we ask the question, which is more accurate, uh, what you see on the label is more accurate than uh, potential calories. Okay, so the next thing we want to learn how to analyze are the daily values. And you've probably noticed on every nutrition label that there are these percents on the right hand side. These percents are based on recommendations by the U.S. Department of Agriculture for how much of these nutrients people should be consuming daily. But the way that we look at these percents is not the same from nutrient to nutrient. For example, some of these should be considered minimums. Uh, for example, uh, vitamins. Uh, it's okay if you get, for example, more than 100% vitamin C in a day. Uh, or fiber, we can get more than uh, you know, the recommended daily intake of fiber a day, and that's okay. Some, however, we would look at as maximums. For example, we probably don't want to be going over cholesterol. It's not recommended to get high levels of that in your diet. And finally, it's important to keep in mind that all of these values are based on a 2,000 calorie diet which of course some people might be on that, but most people are gonna be on a diet that's lower or higher than that. So again, uh, percents are not something that we should take as a hard, fast rule that that's exactly how much we should be getting, uh, but keep these considerations in mind. Next, let's look at two of the nutrients on our nutrition label and how to analyze uh, information there. So we'll start with fat. Now you'll notice that under fat, there are two kinds of fat listed, saturated, and trans fat. And these are both fats that are generally considered by nutritionists to be unhealthy. Uh, the other kind of fat that's not shown here is unsaturated. And there's an easy way to calculate that using the information here. We simply need to take the total amount of fat in the food and subtract the saturated fat. And what's left over would be unsaturated. So for example, in our kiwi fruit here, you'll notice that none of that fat is saturated. So if we simply take one minus zero, we'll get one gram of unsaturated fat. And that's all of the fat in our kiwi is the unsaturated kind, which is generally considered to be more healthy. Next, let's look at carbs. 
So we've learned about the different types of carbs. Simple carbs are generally long chains made of sugars. Sugars are the simple carbs. And you can see here the sugars listed for a kiwi fruit is 16. So out of our 26 total grams of carbs, 16 are sugar. The fiber you'll remember is a complex carb, but remember that we cannot digest fiber. So one useful number that we might want to calculate is how many of the carbs in this food are digestible complex carbs like starch? And the easy way to do that is to simply take the fiber and the sugars and subtract them from our total carbs. So in our kiwi fruit again here, we would take that 26 and we would subtract both the fiber and the sugars. And that gives us 21 carbs. And when we subtract that from our 26, that leaves five grams of starch. So now we're going to practice and here you'll see a label that we used in the previous lesson. This is a McDonald's fruit and yogurt uh, dessert and we're going to ask you to practice those two calculations. So first, how many grams of unsaturated fat are there? And second, how many grams of digestible complex carbs will you get from eating this yogurt? So go ahead and pause the video while you work out the math and then press play again when you're ready. Okay, so hopefully you were able to work that out again. Uh, we have two grams of total fat in our uh, yogurt. One gram of that is saturated. And if you do the simple subtraction, that should leave you with one gram of unsaturated fat. And the second question, how many complex digestible carbs will you get? We have 33 grams total, uh, but in that 33 grams are 22 grams of sugar and one gram of fiber. So if we subtract those 23 uh, combined from the total, we should get 10 grams of complex carbs. So there you have it. Very simple way to analyze and find out uh, a little more about your food. Lastly, I'd like you to take a look at these three nutrition labels and evaluate them for their health value. Uh, would these be foods you would use in a diet? Would you use these if you were training for a sport? So take a moment to look at the labels. Now, if you looked carefully, you'll notice a lot of high concentrations of things like sodium, saturated fat, uh, even cholesterol are pretty high as well as sugar. Some of you might have guessed what these are. Uh, this is a shake, a double-double, and fries from In-N-Out. Now, we Southern Californians love our In-N-Out, but if you're training for a sport, this may not be the best option. Uh, while this is very high in calories, over 1,700 calories total, it's very high, you can see, in saturated fat. Um, the shake, surprisingly, has more fat and more sodium uh, than the other foods. A lot of us think of the fries typically as the saltiest thing from a fast food chain, but actually the shake uh, is, is pretty bad. And we can look closely at this. Uh, saturated fat is really, really high. Again, over 100% of your daily saturated fat intake just from the strawberry shake. Uh, that saturated fat, remember, is the kind that can lead to cardiovascular health problems. We also have a really high sugar content. You'll notice 75 grams of sugar. If you go into your kitchen and take a tablespoon, scoop out six tablespoons of sugar, and it'll probably surprise you how much uh, that is. That's 75 grams. The chocolate shake isn't too much better. Uh, it is a little lower in sugar, but you'll see higher in saturated fat just slightly compared to the shake. So something to consider when you're heading out for lunch. All right, hope that helps and uh, we'll see you next time.